four pages in 30 minutes, so it's going to be in tongues tonight, and the interpretation is up to y'all. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So uh, let's pray, and we're going to get into the Word. Father, we love you tonight. We're so grateful to be in your house. We're thankful that tonight we are going to be taught the Word of God, and you've given us ears that hear, you've given us eyes that see, and you've given us a heart uh, to understand. And so we thank you for it tonight. Father, have, have your way. Minister your words to your people tonight for the building up of your body. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. And we all said, Amen. Amen. So the, uh, the scripture that Pastor Nate shared is a great jumping off place, uh, 1 Peter, uh, which in the King James or Amplified, it says that God has already given us great and precious promises. Everything that we need, right? Every need, everything that we need for life and godliness. He's already given. Say, he's already given. So it's important that we know some things. Is that right? It's important that we know his will. And it's equally as important that we know his ways. That we know his will and that we know his ways. And so I want to touch on uh, just quickly tonight a couple of, of his ways. Um, let's see. I'm going to read Psalms 86, 11, which says, Teach me your way, O Lord, that I may walk and live in your truth. Direct and unite my heart solely, reverently, to fear and honor your name. Amen. Uh, unite my heart to fear the fear of the Lord and the honor of the Lord. We cannot talk about this enough, especially in the culture that we are in, that we would be a people that walk in the fear of the Lord, Amen. that there is honor for him and for his house and for his people and for his ways. Amen? Amen. Amen. Psalms 22, I'm sorry, 25, 9 says, He leads the humble in what is right, and the humble he teaches his way. So here is a clarification on who gets taught his way. Yeah, I, I make eye contact, and I, I expect some yes, amen, I hear you, yes, okay, talking to you talking to youth. I'm talking to adults. There is a qualification here for the ones who get to be taught the ways of the Lord, and that is humility. Humility. Uh, we may or may not talk more about this tonight, but in case that we don't, let's talk about humility for a moment. The Bible says that uh, Moses in his day was the most humble man on the earth. Have y'all ever read that? Yeah. And the Bible also tells us, these are scriptures in here. I'm kind of I'm kind of just right now. Um, but it says that that uh, God showed his acts unto the Israelites, but he showed his ways unto Moses. So we see that humility and the ways of God are connected. If we want to know the ways of God, if we want to be taught the ways of God, then humility has to be the position of my heart. Has to be the position of our hearts. Humility. What is that? Humility is the best way that makes sense to me is a teachable heart. Amen. That I'm teachable. That I come up under a higher authority. Humility. Humility must be in place for us to qualify to be taught the ways of the Lord. Amen. Amen. So his will and his ways. And how many of you know that we have to be taught this? We have to be taught this. Every person on the planet, we have to be taught what his will is and what his ways are. And this is why I'm going to hit for just a moment here about two of his ways that's vitally, vitally important. 
1 Corinthians 12, 18 says, But now hath God set the members, every one of them, in the body as it has pleased him. I want you to know that this scripture, and especially in this day and hour, is not honored uh, in, certainly not in the world. We wouldn't expect it to be in the world, but not even uh, among God's people. <clears throat> Because the majority of Christians believe that I can go to church wherever I want to go to church. It doesn't matter just as long as I'm going to church. Is that what this scripture says? <clears throat> it says that he has set us, his people, in the body as, as it has pleased him. So uh, this has been said many times before. That uh, where I go to church, it's not a matter of my personal preference, but it is a matter of my obedience to the Lord. Of, of, of Him leading me and Him obeying me in the place that I am to be planted. Someone say amen. 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 God is the one that knows the supplies that we need. He is the one that knows the word, the supplies of the spirit, and the relationship that we need. And I have seen over my years, time and time again, families that are destroyed for one reason, and that's they left the body where God had called them. Amen. Amen. And so it matters. Young people, I'm telling you, the most important decision that you're ever going to make in your life is not where you go to school, what job you are to take, but it is whether you decide if you're going to allow God to plant you in the church that he's called you to. No job and no amount of money, no job and no amount of money is worth leaving the place of your flourishment. Amen. If we're chasing dollars, if we're chasing our own way, then we're going to be like Pastor said, we're just left at, at whatever we can produce. And that is a crappy way to live when God calls us to hire. Amen. Amen. Uh, and so this next one, Jeremiah 3.15. I'm preaching myself out of breath. <laughs> says, I will give you pastors according to my heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and with understanding. So here's a promise in a direction that we have from the Lord. If we allow him to set us in the body as it has pleased him, then this is his promise to us. That he will give us pastors according to his heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and with understanding. There's many in the churches today. There's many in this church. You may be one of them. You may not be. But just because you go to a church does not mean that you're submitted to a pastor. And the anointing of that office is only able to help and bring a supply of heaven to you to the degree that you agree with God and you come into submission to his word. There, there's an anointing. There are offices that pastors step in that uh, it's not for their personal lives. It's for the feeding and the equipping of the people. Amen. So I am so confident that when I come through these doors, I'm not looking to a natural man. I like him. I do. I like Pastor Evan. I, we would be friends with them even if they weren't our pastors. Why? Because they, they carry a spirit of faith. Because they, they served the body of Christ before they ever stepped into a ministry office position. The kind of people I like to hang out with. Amen. Uh, but so many times we take this verse and we base it on personality. We base it on natural personality and we just see in the natural realm when this is completely and totally spiritual. Right. Totally and completely spiritual. Yep. So we have the ability to come in to make a decision in our hearts because God calls us to a church yep. and he calls us to a pastor. Right. Well, Mona, I just don't like that because I think we should just go wherever we feel like that we should go. I didn't write the book. 
I didn't write the book. This is a way of God. And if we want to walk in the ways of God, what, was, what must we be? Humble and teachable. Amen? So my confidence again, and your confidence can be that when I come in, because every time we come to church, we should be getting answers. Every time we come to church, we should be getting uh, direction and correction. Absolutely. It, you say every single time, every single time, because we're not all there yet. God's always dealing with us about something because he wants to get more of him into us. Amen. And it's through the teaching and the preaching of the word that does it. No amount of counseling is going to do it. I'm telling you, no amount of counseling and talking and talking and talking and talking about what the problem is, is going to arrive you at the place you want to be. Amen. Amen. It is, it is through, uh, through the word. There, there is, um, let me catch my breath. <laughs> Say, Mona, get back on your treadmill. <laughs> Um, I believe this with all my heart and this was something at one time that was in place guys sometimes there is a need sometimes there is a need for uh, for spiritual counseling <clears throat> but when that happens it's not that the counseling that they wave a wand over us or over you and make everything great when there is a need for counseling, declare what the issue is, and then the answer is, this is what the Word says. And if through counseling you're sitting there and you say, yeah, but, and you tell the story again, then you're not interested in the way out. You're just wanting to vent. And my, <clears throat> my absolute, I believe this with all my heart, anything that I'm facing in my life, that the Lord will get it to me through the preaching and the teaching of his word when I come through these doors. I, I'm coming in for answers. I'm coming in for direction. Amen. Amen. So, so, so just a tip. Uh, if you're needing counseling, if, if, if you're needing some, uh, some wisdom, all right, let's get it and then let's act on the word. Let's get it and then let's act on the word. Let's not just keep talking about it and keep talking about it and keep talking about it. Let's get it and let's act on the word. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> and I said, oh, man, that was awesome. Um, God not only calls us to a church, he does call us to a pastor. Amen. And so sometimes we have to be like Tom Cruise. Man, it's true. <clears throat> Maverick, there's bogeys all around. There's bogeys all around. We got to get out of here. Maverick, we got to get out of here. I'm not leaving my wingman. I'm not leaving my wingman. There's bogeys all around. I'm not leaving my wingman. <clears throat> this is how we got to be when it comes to the place and the pastor that he's called to. All of the thoughts, my granddaughter's laughing at me. <clears throat> now, come on, I thought I might get some high fives from the youth. Tom Cruise, <clears throat> he's too old for y'all, isn't he? <clears throat> I'm not leaving my wingman. I'm not leaving my wingman. Well, I don't know that I agree with that. Thoughts, bogeys, will that hurt my feelings? Uh, well, I can make more money if I move over here. I don't know where I'm going to go to church, but I can make more money over here. Bogies, bogies, bogies. So what are we going to say? I'm not leaving my wingman. I'm not leaving my wingman. We're talking about the ways of God. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> All right. So... Let me ask you this question. What's your interest level? What's your interest level? And we need to be honest here. 
And we need to ask ourselves this question, what is my interest level? When it comes to, you know, God has already given us everything that we need to, that pertains to life and godliness. He's already given it to us. But sometimes our interest level is so low that if God doesn't just drop it in our, li- in our lap, uh, then we'll just go and we'll, and we'll try to be making our own way. And we open ourselves up for destruction. Talking about the ways of God. What's your interest level? And let me tell you something. If I believe, if I believe these scriptures, if I believe Psalms 107.20, he sent his word and he healed them and delivered them from their destructions. If I believe that. If I believe uh, Proverbs 4.20-22, 20 my son, attend to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Let them not depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are life to you and health and healing to all of your flesh. If I believe these words, you know what I'm going to be doing? I'm going to get myself to where the words are. I'm going to get myself to where the words are. That means I am at the church that he's called me to Sunday morning, Sunday night. If they offer Bible classes, I'm there because I'm interested. Because I'm interested in life. <clears throat> and the Bible just said that uh, <clears throat> his words are life unto us and health and healing to all of our flesh. Yeah, Lord, yeah, I know, I know, I know your will is healing. I know your will is healing, but we forfeit his will because we will not submit to his ways. Amen. 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 And so sometimes faith is very uh, frustrated in our lives because we're convinced of something, but we're not submitted to his ways. If I'm convinced that his words are life unto me. If I'm convinced that his words are health and healing to my flesh, I'm going to make sure that I'm getting to where his words are. Amen. And what is the promise? What is the promise? Uh, That he sets us in the body as it pleases him. And he gives us pastors after his own heart. So my confidence is not in a man. My confidence is, God, is in God. That his word is true. That he knows what he's doing. And I'm submitted to that word. And, and, and so my expectation and my faith is in him. Never disappoints. But it, it's important that we yield and that we submit to his ways. It's, we've got to know his will. We have to know his will. Uh, The Bible tells us that God's people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. So we have to be, we have to be taught. We have to know what his will is concerning healing. If we're not going to a church that teaches healing, that the Lord Jesus took upon himself our infirmities and our weaknesses and he bore away our diseases and by the stripes that wounded him, we were healed. If we're not sitting in a church that teaches the healing word, then we will not be healed because it takes his word and faith in his word to receive the things from God. So it matters where we go. It matters what word we're listening to. So I'm telling you, young people, You can't just say, I'm going to go make my own way and I'm going to go do this and I'm going to go do that and I'll I'll try to find a church. You're going to forfeit the highest way of God for yourselves. Well, trying to see where to go here. If you read the account of Cain in Genesis 4, we're not going to go there for time's sake, but we know know that Cain brought an offering and Abel brought an offering. Is that right? And one was acceptable and one was not acceptable to God. Say the ways matter. 
So there are a few ways that this, uh, this passage of, of Scripture could be taught. And uh, I, I, I accept, you know, sometimes there's, you just get different things and a Scripture can be looked at a few different ways. As far as because it's, well, was it not acceptable because it was not a blood sacrifice or was it not acceptable or a, a blood offering or was it not acceptable uh, because he didn't bring his best and his first? I think both ways can apply. All right? At, at, at any rate, God did not accept. Um, oh, help me. Cain's, yeah, uh, Cain killed Abel. Come on, no, Cain killed Abel. Uh, did not a, a, uh, accept Cain's offering. And, and Cain was mad about it. And you say, well, how, how would they know what they, what they should have brought? Well, even though it doesn't tell us this in Scripture, we have to know that in somewhere, in some place, God instructed them on the proper way to approach him. Amen. Amen. So regardless of what the way, what the way was and how Cain missed it, uh, his heart wasn't right. His heart was not right. Amen. And, and, so, uh, and so the Lord just, God just told him, yeah, I, I accept Abel's offering. I do not accept uh, uh, Cain, your, uh, your offering, Cain. What does this tell us? That means we cannot just serve God any way we choose to serve him and expect his blessing and his approval upon our lives. It's his way. It's his way. It's not our way. And so Cain was ticked off, made him mad. He didn't like it. God, why don't you accept me? You should accept me any way that I come to you. That's what he was saying. It's not right, is it? That's why it's good to know what God's ways are. And there was no humility whatsoever found in Cain, was there? I'm going to do it my way, and God, I expect you, I expect, I expect you to bless it. I'm going to do it my way, God. I'm going to do it my way. I get a little bit of truth in his word, uh, and I run with it, and I am just going to decide that this is the way it's going to be, and God, I want you to bless this. <clears throat> but we not only have to know his will, we have to know his ways. And that is the wonderful thing about the local church. That is the most magnificent thing about the place that God has called us to be. That week in and week out, week in and week out, we are learning more and more about his will and his ways. His will and his ways. So that we can enjoy all that God provided for us through his son. Amen. Amen. Ain't the most exciting place to be on planet earth is where the word of the living God is being taught and preached. Because it's life to you. You're not going to find life at Walmart. You're not going to find life at the football field. You're not going to find life at the baseball field. You're not going to find life at a cool vacation or at, a, at a, a fraternity, or a sorority. We're not going to find life there. There's one place that God has ordained on planet earth, and that's his church. And that is his church. Amen. Where the words of life, the words of God, are taught and preached week in and week out. And Ephesians 4 tells us that, that, that when he gave those gifts to the church, the pastors, the apostle, the prophet, the teacher, the evangelist, that he gave it for the equipping of the saints, the perfecting of the saints, so that we can grow up and we can be perfect, uh, wanting and lacking nothing. It's going to take his word. It's going to take humility. It's going to take a staying power. It's going to take coming up under his word and say, okay, God, this looks like that this would be a better move for me, but I am sticking with your word. And, and although I don't see the beginning from the end, you do. I'm sticking to your word. I'm sticking to your word. I'm sticking to your word. Amen. 
Amen. <clears throat> so we're going to very, very quickly turn to Joshua 1. And uh, I want to read these, pa this passage, Joshua 1, 1 through 8. <clears throat> Pastor Evan uh, <clears throat> mentioned this uh, last Wednesday. It's a good message. Y'all should go back and listen to it again. Uh, <clears throat> I'm just going to start verse 1 there. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord... The Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' minister, Moses, my servant, is dead. I've read that before, and I've thought, well, that's kind of abrupt. You know, hey, hey, Moses, this is how it is, Joshua. This is how it is. So we know just in, in very quickly thinking about the Israelites, God bringing them out of Egypt, all the miracles that they saw. Do you know they saw miracles? Someone tell me a miracle they saw. Red sea, Red sea, water out of a rock, manna from heaven. Right? Uh, uh, yeah, pillar of fire and a cloud, pillar of fire by night, cloud by day. Those are some pretty amazing uh, miracles. Is that right? Pretty amazing miracles. Uh, and yet, because of their grumbling and because of their complaining and because of their unbelief, they did not enter the promise that was read at the beginning of the scripture, all the things that God has laid up for us before the foundation of the world. They didn't enter their promise because of unbelief and because of grumbling and complaining. And I'm telling you, grumbling and complaining in our hearts and in our mouth will steal the very promises of God from us. But hey, Joshua, Moses is dead. Get over it and move on. That's basically how I read it. Get, get over it and, and move on. You cannot live your life looking in the rearview mirror. And, and, you know, and, and the Israelites, they were looking back at Egypt. They kept looking back at Egypt. And, you know, God did all these amazing miracles for them. Uh, but when a, uh, a pressure or a need would arise, <clears throat> they suddenly forgot all about that. Right? And there was grumbling, and there, and there was uh, complaining. And so they were romanticizing how much better it would have been had they just stayed in Egypt. Can we remind ourselves that they were slaves in Egypt? Yeah. Slaves. They were slaves. But this is how ignorant we get when we grumble and complain. We get really, really ignorant, and what in reality, the, uh, the way we're seeing it is not actually reality. <clears throat> Moses is dead. So now arise, take his, uh, take his place, go over this Jordan, you and all this people, into the land which I'm giving to them, the Israelites. Now this is after that generation had died out, Okay. The, the unbelieving, complaining generation had died out. And it's time for them to go in. And you remember that Caleb and Joshua were the only two of that generation that remained. Is that right? Y'all don't grow sleepy on me. Look up here. Are we interested? Okay. Uh, from the wilderness in this Lebanon to the great river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, uh, Canaan into the great Mediterranean. I've got to say this. We were talking about all these funny words and, and the Hittites and the Jebusites and all the ites. I told Pastor, I said, one of these days you just ought to throw in cellulites in there and see if anyone's, <laughs> anyone's uh, uh, listening. But all the ites. <clears throat> Verse 5. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not fail you or forsake you. Be strong, be confident, be of good courage. For you shall cause this people to inherit the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. I wonder how many people uh, that God has ordained uh, in your life for you to cause them to inherit the promises of God. I wonder, I wonder whose lives uh, are dependent on me finishing my course. I wonder whose lives in your lives, the people around you, uh, are dependent upon you finishing your course. 
leading them into the promises of God. Be strong and be courageous. He says it multiple times. Only you be strong and very courageous. Uh, and, and you know, you've got to remember that this is the end of those 40 years. Caleb and Joshua have been, have been living with an unbelieving generation for 40 years. So not only did their grumbling and complaining keep them out of the promised land, but now Joshua and Caleb had been living with them these 40 years. Listening to their complaints. Listening to their... It, it wasn't the spirit of faith in the wilderness. They were, they were surrounded by an unbelieving generation. But verse 8... Verse 8 prescribes the way that they are going to be successful in going into the promised land. Verse 8 is the prescription, the prescribed way of God that will arrive us at the promises of God in our lives. All right, let's read it. Verse 8, this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. But you shall meditate on it day and night, that you may observe and do according to all that is written in it. For then you shall make your way prosperous, and then you shall deal wisely and have good success. Young, young people, do you want to have good success? Here's the prescription. Amen. 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 I, I, I agree. Amen. Amen. Here's the, here, here is God's prescribed way of good success in our lives. It's not going to come other ways. It, we, we've got to make a determination that God's way is the right way. God's way is the right way. If I want success in my life, if I want to inherit the promise that God's already given I'm not trying to get it. I'm not trying to earn it. I'm, I'm not begging him for it. He's already given it. But there is a way for me to lay hold of it. There is a way for you to lay hold of it. In the midst, in the midst of an unbelieving generation that we could be a part of here on the earth. Do you believe God's word? I was going to talk about meditating and speaking, but, but meditating. So this does not mean that we walk around and we say scriptures 24-7. But it's a lifestyle. But it's a lifestyle that, that God's word is always on my lips. God's word, God's way is always on my lips. That his word is always before my eyes. Pastor talked about it, the gates. The gates. The gates matter. The gates matter. What we allow in our lives, the gates matter. And people who have sat under the word, who have some years of serving the Lord, uh, you're not exempt from this. You're not exempt from this. Don't get lazy. Don't get lazy. <clears throat> the word. The word, the word, it shall not depart from my mouth. I'm going to meditate on it day and night. And then, and then it says, I shall make my way prosperous and then I shall have good success. Do you know what? It doesn't say anything. It doesn't say anything in there about God, about the devil. It talks about me, it talks about you, and it talks about his word. That's it. It talks about us and it talks about his word. So what I do and what you do with the word, not casually, not casually. There's a lot of casualties in the church because of casual Christianity. But if I'm going to have good success, if you're going to have good success in any area of your life, it totally and completely depends on the place of honor, respect, submission, reverential fear that we give to this scripture right here. Right here. What am, what, what am I going to do? What, what am I going to do with this? 
What am I going to do? Well, I wasn't brought up that way, Mona. That's just not the way I was taught. Okay, me either. But we're being taught now. Let's not be copping excuses and saying, well, this is too hard, or I can't do it, or I wasn't brought up this way. We're being taught now. God's bringing you not only his will of laying hold of every good thing that he has provided for you, but he's bringing us his ways. And just like, uh, just like Cain, we're not going to arrive at the promises and the goodness of God doing it our own way. Doing it our own way. Hallelujah. Pastor, I'm going to, you want it? Does anyone have an oxygen tank? <laughs> that, that may be, be the fastest ever. Thank you. Okay, he, he is coming up. Go ahead, Pastor. Well, I mean, we, this is, you just got to hear, you just got, we got honored tonight. That was honored. <laughs> Good Lord. That was the Lord honoring us. That was straight the word, uh, straight power, straight anointing, straight impartation. Um, it's something that, it's like you just heard in, in 30 minutes, something that could change your life. Yeah. You know, you want to talk about a TED Thank Talk? Thank you, Lord. There you go, right there, TED Talk. Thank you, Lord. And uh, it's just totally, totally the Lord. So um, we just thank the Lord for that word tonight. Father, we thank you for your word tonight. We, we, did, we declare with the words of our mouth that we are doers of your word, not hearers only. And, Father, we just ask you, um, show us where we're not teachable. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Show us where we're, uh, where we're filled with, even just where we need to lay ourselves down. Uh, Father, our desire is is to be teachable, to be dependent upon you. And so we, I thank you, Father, for just even um, uh, the, the word that was sown tonight to go deep into the hearts, not to land on the wayside. Um, and, Father, just the tending and the bringing forth of fruit. You're so good. You're so faithful. And we just say thank you tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So, you know, she was talking to youth a lot tonight. Uh, and one of the ways, one of the things we talk about in Starting Point, and, and you know, there's videos you can watch if you've never been through Starting Point, but one of the things we teach is talk, talking about finding the place that God's called you to be. And, you know, you look for, you can look with your eyes for the, you know, all the kinds of things, but the Bible says the children of God are not led by their eyes, they're led by their spirit. So the thing is, for you to find the place that God has you, you know, let's say the Lord's leading you to college, and, and we know that, that beyond church is not everybody's church. We don't intend it to be. God sets people in, the, and nor, nor is it the best church. Okay, let me make that clear. It, we are gonna, but we are very happy to be where God has set us to be. So when maybe the Lord has you to become a doctor, and He's going to move you to Kentucky or wherever. When you get to the place that as you are following the Lord, you He's going to lead you to where the, a church is going to be by you asking Lord where. Do you want me to be? And w- then you, you go there, and something. That I remember my pastor used to tell us this, and I'm t- you know a lot of you you know kids are you might be going to college or whatever you might be moving off, but I remember my pastor, Pastor Mac, he would say, "Give the Lord an ample time to show you why He brought you, because the steps of the righteous man are ordered of the Lord." It just seemed right that I should go to that church, and so he would say, "Give the Lord ample opportunity to show you why He brought you," and so you, where you're just checking your heart, you're not checking your ears, you're checking your heart. You know, because uh, anyway, and, and then when the Lord says, this is the place, this, I'm going to echo something that Mona says all the time. She says this, um, when you know that this is the place that God has called you, wherever that, then make a big deal about it. Yeah. Write it down in your Bible. This is the place, because guess what? The place that God has called you, the enemy is going to try everything in his power to pull you from it. Every trick, every, and so make a big deal about it. And if you haven't made a big deal about a place that God's called you, make a big deal about it. Find it, write it down somewhere. Make it, make a big deal about it. And, uh, and man, she was just spitting truth tonight. So Father, so glad, so thankful to hear the word. Oh, I'm just could jump up and down. And I'm not saying that for any other reason, uh, because I just love hearing the authority of God. The, God's word preached with authority, because it is authority. Amen.